Good morning, church. It's Karen with a quick voiceover to explain a little bit of something that I realized we neglected to cover in our videos. When I started planning this service a couple months ago, I decided that I wanted to choose something that was outside the ELW, outside our usual hymnal. So I proposed to Pastor Tim, hey, what if we borrowed one of the service orders from the This Far By Faith hymnal, which is the hymnal that was created largely by and for our African descent siblings in the Lutheran Church. And so the service order that we're going to be following today borrows from those traditions, including the tradition of telling testimonies, telling each other the stories of the ways that God has worked in our lives and the ways that we've worked in the lives of each other. And sort of similar to like a revival service, uh, those stories will come towards the beginning of the service. Some of them are short and sweet and simple, and some of them are very deep and vulnerable. But because of that, I wanted to give you a heads up before we got there so that we wouldn't be taken off guard by some of the things that we're going to discover together. Telling each other our stories is a thing that we've been trying to grow as a congregation, so we will just consider these testimonies and the other adjustments to this worship order a little out of our ordinary as continuing in that pattern of growth. And now that that little bit of housekeeping is out of the way, we will prepare our hearts for worship through the gift of music. Good morning, church, and welcome to worship on this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, this is also the day we are celebrating our status as a Reconciling in Christ congregation. Our uh, ministry of hospitality and welcome includes a welcome to people of all sexual orientations and gender identities and expressions, and we are public in that welcome through our participation in the Reconciling in Christ program. So once a year, we focus on that aspect of our mission and ministry, and today is that day for us. So uh, welcome into this celebration of how God continues to welcome all of humanity into God's family and how God shares that mission and ministry with us. Hello everybody, I'm Steve Elwood. I've been a member of Trinity for 50 years and I'd like to comment on the ELCI policy of reconciling in Christ. Justice for all is one of the things that's motivated me all my adult life. I wouldn't want to uh, belong to any group that wasn't moving towards justice. Sometimes it takes a little longer than I'd like, but we all need to be educated. Only God has perfect justice, but we are moving in the direction of justice. Thank you. I just confirm what Steve said. I would not be able to be part of a congregation that didn't affirm and proclaim that God loves everyone, no exceptions. Growing up, I went to a, a large church. I knew that there were LGBT people in Traverse City, but I didn't know any of them. They were other, they were somewhere else. They didn't affect me. The first time I ever heard mention of LGBT issues in a church was when I was 23. It was a shock. I honestly never thought I would have heard anyone, much less a pastor, give a sermon on 
if his kids uh, came out to him, he would be happy for them. He would accept them completely as who they were. That was not my, my experience. Not being accepted was what I always assumed would happen to any person whose uh, sexuality was not the same as other people. It was that other again. We started trying to get the church to become a Reconciling in Christ Church. I was a student associate helping work on this with the pastor and several other students. We had a, a large uh, meeting about this with uh, the church council and other interested members. I got a call a few days later. He started talking about the meeting that we had both been at. He had been the men's gymnastic coach at Michigan State for a long time. And his comment was, you know, I really had to watch those boys when we went on away trips. This was one of my first real experiences with having these topics brought up in church. One was highly positive, the other was highly negative. At that point, I was finally just accepting myself who I was, and I was unsure, I was, I was scared. And knowing that it, there were factions of people within the church who only saw people like me as one thing it was disheartening. He went on then to write an opinion piece in the church newsletter talking about how we don't want to include them. We don't need to tell them they're welcome. I went to Holden directly after that. I spent a year and a half, but when I left, I, I dropped out of the church. I completely dropped out. I figured that if I'm going to be a them, what's the point? When I moved here and I saw the building and I saw the rainbow flag and I thought that that is a place I would want to go to church. It ended up being fortuitous that on Christmas Eve, Anna and I decided that we wanted to go to a Christmas Eve service. And when we pulled up to the address that we got online and I saw the, the church, the church that had the, the big rainbow flag and I knew I was home. I don't have to be a them. I can be one of you. I feel that I am accepted as all of who I am and not just for a part. So I thank you. I thank you for doing the work I thank you for becoming welcoming and proclaiming that you're welcome. God calls you good, beloved child. You
Pastor Tim contacted me about taking part in uh, today's service, I wasn't 100% sure I was comfortable doing so. Growing up, did not have many positive experiences with faith and with the communities of faith that I was a part of. For the most part, I always felt very marginalized and unwelcome and uncomfortable. And I still sometimes have feelings of fear that, that is going to repeat itself. But I also want to acknowledge the fact that in Trinity Lutheran, in our Reconciling in Christ community, I have finally found a place where even if sometimes I still get nervous, I also realize that I can be accepted for who I am, for what I am, and what I have to offer instead of whose mother I am, whose wife I might be, who I love. None of those things matter. That is not the only thing that I as a person can bring to our community. And having a place where that is true where the people around me have shown me that that is true means it means the world. Knowing that I can be myself, that I am not an outcast, that I'm not odd, is a wonderful feeling. It is a comfort and it strengthens my faith. In the time that I've been a member of Trinity, I have seen my faith grow exponentially. And I have seen the comfort with which I hold my faith grow. I no longer feel embarrassed to admit things like I'm a Christian because I have found a community of Christians that don't embarrass me. <laughs> I see in the people of Trinity I see people who live the word of Christ, who live the love of Christ, who don't need to hold up signs that, that proclaim what they are because you're known by your acts. And that, that brings me to tears because that is a huge change in my life and in my experiences. And I thank you all for that. I thank you for being the community known by your acts. And I thank you for being the community that has brought me in and shown me that I have a place. Please forgive me for not looking at the camera. I recently had cataract surgery and my eyes are really sensitive to the light. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. During the celebration of Pride Month, with so much going on in the world, I think it's important that the celebration doesn't get lost in the shuffle. As I think about how welcoming you were to me at Ga and Gateway, I am reminded of how it made me feel to be accepted and welcomed so warmly. It encouraged me to continue in my ministry and to maintain my hope. Your welcoming spirit has sustained me and sustained Gateway. Because of you, we are able to continue in our work in the Great Commission. It has also inspired us to look at our neighbors. In the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10, 25 through 37, the lawyer, a man that was well-versed in the law, was led by Jesus to conclude that the neighbor was the one who helped. If I were asked today who is my neighbor, I would have to say without hesitation, Trinity Lutheran Church, because you were the ones who helped. My prayer, my hope, is that during this month, Pride Month, the LGBTQ community receives some of that same brotherly love. It is my hope that they 
to see Trinity as their neighbor. It really is sustaining. As it was written in Hebrews 13, let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Please join me in singing number 651 in our ELW hymnal number 651, O oh, Praise the Gracious Power. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. 
We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Having confessed our sins and received the assurance of our forgiveness, our reconciliation with God is assured. It is in God's nature to be merciful. God desires to extend mercy to us. And so the work of reconciliation is not ours to achieve in terms of our relationship with God. However, we recognize that the work of reconciliation in our daily life, reconciliation of person to person, that work continues. And so uh, the importance of being a reconciling in Christ congregation is a recognition that this work of reconciliation, this gift that we have received from God, is a gift that we get to extend to one another and uh, into the world at large. And so uh, as we prepare for that work of reconciliation, let us do so trusting in the peace that is ours in God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Sunday. Our first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses 5 through 9. Then the prophet Jeremiah responded to Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the Lord's temple. The prophet Jeremiah said, Indeed, may the Lord do just as you have said. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back from Babylon the equipment of the Lord's temple and all the exiles to this place. However, listen closely to what I have to say to you and all the people. The prophets who came before you and me long ago prophesied war, disaster, and disease against many lands and great kingdoms. So the prophet who prophesies peace is recognized as the one who is actually sent by the Lord only when the prophet's message is fulfilled. Our next reading is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 15 through 18. I will sing of the Lord's loyal love forever. I will proclaim your faithfulness with my own mouth from one generation to the next. That's why I say your loyal love is rightly built forever. You establish your faithfulness in heaven. You said, I made a covenant with my chosen one. I promised my servant David. I will establish your offspring forever. I will build up your throne from one generation to the next. The people who know the celebratory shout are truly happy. They walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long and are uplifted by your righteousness because you are the splendor of their strength. By your favor, you make us strong because our shield is the Lord's own. Our King belongs to the Holy One of Israel.
Our scripture today comes from Matthew 10, 40 through 42. Rewards. Those who receive you are also receiving me. And those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who received a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's rewards. Those who receive a righteous person are receiving a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to those little ones because they are my disciples will certainly be rewarded. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Who's in and who's out? Humans seem oriented to ask this question, or questions like it. Who's with us and who's against us? Who can we trust and who's leading us astray? For members of LGBTQ plus communities, the answers to these questions can be life or death. As a gay man, I am fortunate to have supportive family members, but I can remember in the early days after coming out to myself in college, trying to figure out which of my friends were able to maintain a friendship with me now that they knew this aspect of my identity. I remember one woman in particular in my social circle. After struggling with my coming out for a month or two, she came to me and said, I've decided that homosexuality is definitely a sin, and therefore you are going to hell. But I hope this won't affect our friendship. Who is with us, and who can we trust? These questions can have life or death implications. For the nation of Judah during the time of Jeremiah, questions of who to trust, who to believe, were a hot topic. On the one hand, you have the prophet Jeremiah proclaiming loudly and publicly that their days as a nation were numbered, that because the king and the other leaders were no longer focused on caring for the poor and vulnerable among them, because they had become infatuated with their own power, God was not going to protect them from the surrounding nations. Judah would be destroyed, said the prophet. On the other hand, you have Hananiah and the other prophets of the royal court. Their prophecies were filled with assurances of peace, stating that God's covenant with King David would cover them as well, that the good times would continue to roll. So how was the nation of Judah to know which prophet to believe? Well, Jeremiah tells them, you can wait and see if the predictions of peace hold true. Which is helpful advice in retrospect, but is hardly helpful in the moment. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus tells the disciples to look for their allies among those who behave like allies. Jesus says, those who receive you are also receiving me. 
and those who offer a kindness like a cup of cold water in a time before refrigerators and ice machines. Those are the ones who are acting like Jesus' disciples. So what do these two texts, Jeremiah and Matthew, have to say to our ministry of hospitality and welcome? I hear a couple of lessons for us this morning. Number one, words matter, but actions matter more. When our urge is to say all are welcome, we need to make sure that our actions back up those words. We need to do our homework on who needs a particular word of welcome to know that yes, we mean you specifically. And we have to learn what are the barriers to true welcome and to work on removing those barriers. For example, one thing our Bible study group was invited to ponder was would people of color see themselves reflected in the artwork in our church building? Or would they only see white people cast in the image of God? This is a barrier. Number two, peace isn't always the goal. Jeremiah's words were trustworthy, but they were far from peaceful. And in the verses just before today's gospel reading, the words that we heard in last week's gospel, Jesus says he comes to bring division rather than peace. In order to offer a genuine welcome to people of all sexual orientations and gender identities and expressions, in order to become an anti-racist church, we paradoxically cannot welcome those who do not share that vision of God's calling. As Jesus says, I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones because they are my disciples will certainly be rewarded. May we continue to explore opportunities to offer concrete acts of hospitality, sharing in Christ's ministry. And may we be blessed to receive the hospitality of others, those who will serve as Christ for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Do not fear, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Do not fear, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Do not fear. to unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversation, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O God. God of abundance, who paints the skies in every hue, we praise you for the ever-changing seasons. Teach us to see and celebrate 
the stunning beauty in all you have made. Teach us to feel awe again. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion teach us to overcome fear with hope meet hate with love and welcome one another as we would welcome you hear us O oh god god of compassion you dwell in solidarity with the oppressed the lonely and all who suffer in every place of pain tenderly hold those asking for your gentle touch grab hold of those begging for their lives turned around we pray for comfort for wholeness for peace with justice and for your will to be done grant wisdom patience and healing to all those impacted by the current co coronavirus outbreak we ask for your particular care for those we lift before you in silence of our hearts now. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give passion to embrace your, your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. God of all times, all people, and all places, we give you thanks for those who have gone before us, on whose shoulders we stand. We thank you for the activism of Marsha P. Johnson and Harvey Milk. We thank you for gifts of wisdom, for advocacy, for the inbreaking kingdom and for the promise of abundant life with you and all the saints. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. People of God, we have been reconciled to God through the work of Jesus Christ. We have heard testimony from one another about the importance of our ministry of hospitality and welcome. We have feasted on God's word and we have responded in prayer. And now we are being invited into the world that God loves, to find those ways of sharing this message that God loves everyone that God has made, that there are no barriers between humankind and God's love, that any barrier that has been placed before a person is a false barrier. And so the work of reconciliation continues, that we are agents of God's love in the world. And so before we go out into the world and uh, engage in this work, we will once again respond in song. And uh, we will then gather as a uh, congregation for our congregational meeting. Uh, part of the work of hospitality is making sure that our facility is a hospitable facility, and that means that the buildings are in a good working order. So uh, we look forward to hearing the recommendation from the council and the property committee so that we might vote on that needed repair of our chimney. Then uh, we will continue the work that God has for us in our daily lives. 
Let us sing. We sing indeed. I will invite you to begin to turn to number 729 in our ELW hymnal, number 729, The Church of Christ in Every Age. This is a particularly good Lutheran text, um, a text that we can kind of grab onto, and I also think it's a particularly good uh, word for Trinity at this particular crossroads of our worship life. Not only are we learning a lot of really uncomfortable truths about ourselves and our position in the world, but we're also um, learning how to do worship together in new ways. So I will just highlight for you this very Reformation-ish uh, first verse, perhaps one of my favorite hymn texts in our entire hymnal. The Church of Christ in every age beset by change but spirit-led, must claim and test her heritage and keep on rising from the dead. Number 729, The Church of Christ in Every Age. The Church of Christ in every age, beset by change but spirit-led, must claim and test her and keep on rising from the dead. Across the world, across the street, the victims of injustice cry for shelter and for bread to eat and never live before. Receive this blessing from amidst the flowers. In the act of creation, holy God declared all, each and every one, each and everything, to be good. May you attend well to what God declares to be good. There is room enough. There is love enough for all, each and every one, each and everything. In God, there is love for you. Receive that love in the name of the Holy Trinity, God our Creator, Jesus our Redeemer, and the Spirit our Sanctifier. Hello, church. My name is the Reverend April Maya Olmus. I'm the senior priest here in Elan Parish in the city of Trondheim, Norway. And I'm here together with our religious educator. Hi, I'm Ingrid. And our director of music. Hi, I'm David. We are looking forward to celebrating a service together with you from our parish to yours.
You'll notice uh, there is an offering plate here next to me. That is uh, a way for me to remember to uh, invite you to go to our website and uh, make your offering electronically and uh, fill the plate uh, virtually through the electronic means, or you can uh, send your uh, financial support of our mission and ministry uh, by sending a check in the mail and those will be deposited as well. Thank you for your generous continued support of the ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church.